Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Angus in Scotland. The first thing that comes to my mind is Angus beef because we have a lot of that here in America. I actually had some Angus beef burgers last week, actually. <laughs> and I thought, oh, perfect timing, because I'm about to talk about where that beef originally comes from in Scotland. Angus, as you can see, is along the North Sea coast on the eastern side of Scotland. It is along a little area known as the Firth of Tay. You can see right there. And it has a very interesting geography. It kind of has three distinct zones. The first obviously being the coastline you can see here. This is where all of the major city centers are. The largest, I believe, is Montrose up here. But there's also Arbroath, which we'll talk about in its history. And lots of of, I want to say fishing towns and cities, but there's so much more than that. They are very industrial nowadays, but they were originally built for fishing. The further in you go, the more kind of like farm landscape you get. There are lots of important towns in this area as well. Um, more farming communities. You have the, the the cows, as mentioned before, but also growing lots of crops as well. And then the more north you get, you head into pretty much what's known as the Scottish Highlands. In particular, this region here is part of the Grampian Mountains. You can see the Cairngorms are just up there. Very jagged, mountainy areas. Like when you think of like Outlander or Game of Thrones and you see those big majestic mountain landscapes. That's this region here. Very, very beautiful. One of the more beautiful corners of the world, I think, up here in Scotland. And let's see, what else do I have to mention for geography? I think that's about it to be Lots of rivers, lots of lochs, as they say in Scotland, which are uh, big glacial lakes you can find in the more rugged areas, but also closer to the towns as well nowadays. And I think what's even more interesting about this region is its history, so we're going to get into that next. This region has been inhabited for a very long time. There Lots of very interesting artifacts left behind from the early peoples, mostly like burials, graves, things like that, even cemeteries, multiple grave sites. But the most prominent of the early peoples would have been the Picts. The Picts left behind lots of beautiful. Um, carved stones and interesting forts, big hilltop forts or mounds. Um, it's, it's a really interesting early, I want to say Celtic Gaelic, but they weren't even kind of that. They are kind of their own thing. I think you can lump it into that category, but um, they were their own kind of peoples up here in the wilds of Scotland. They would be invaded quite a few times by the Vikings, the Danish Vikings. And lots of back and forth in that region along the coast here between them. Um, the Gaelic peoples wouldn't have arrived in this region until about the 9th century CE. Just when you get the mingling of the Pictish culture with the Gaelic and now it's just all considered Gaelic this point. 
the, the two cultures have combined to the point where Picts aren't a thing anymore. It's all pretty much a Gaelic culture. The most important thing that has happened in this region by far would have occurred in 1320 in the town of Arbroath. It was here at the Arbroath Abbey, I believe. We'll look at it on Google Earth after. At the Abbey, I want to say it was the Abbey. Cathedral, something like that. It wasn't a cathedral. We'll, we'll talk about it. Um, I want to say Abbey. Arbroath Abbey sounds right. This was where Robert the Bruce, who was the current King of Scotland at the time, declared independence for Scotland. That is because much further south, down by the border with England, uh, a war was raging. The conflicts of that never really reached this far north, up into this area here. I mean, it, it, it would reach north, but not so much in this corner here. But it's where Robert the Bruce declared that Scotland would be independent from England. So it is considered the birthplace of Scotland. How cool is that? That's where Scotland was officially born. There wasn't a lot of violence, like I said, during the Wars of Independence. There was some during the English Civil Wars in the 17th century. A very chaotic time in the United Kingdom. Uh, but the region would bounce back during the Industrial Revolution, building all of the industries here, and of course the fishing, farming, and the, uh, the cattle industry as well. I kind of sailed through that way too fast, because that's pretty much the highlights of the history of Angus. There are lots of little bits here and there, but um, let me get to them on Google Earth, because I can show you lots of neat sites there. Let me pull it up. So here we have Angus Council, you can see here. Let me zoom out a bit so you can see exactly where we are in the world if you're not quite sure where Scotland is located. So here you can see Europe. Here's the United Kingdom here. There's Ireland. We've got Iceland. Scandinavia, we've got France and the Low Countries, so on and so forth. So way up here in the wilds of Scotland you can see Angus. And what I like about this is you can really see the distinct variations of the landscape from these lower farming regions to the highlands. Take a look. You can see just how rugged this area is up here compared to down here. And you see these kind of straight lines all throughout northern Scotland, the most prominent being right there, right? That is due to glaciers melting and receding after the last ice age, leaving behind this magnificent landscape. Let's take a look at it. Maybe we can find some little slideshows up here. I didn't find very many, but we certainly can try. You can see the little locks there, glacial lake. Let's take a look up here at Glenly. Maybe there's... Nope, no pictures there. About up here? Nope. Yeah, I didn't really find a lot. Got some. Look at this beautiful old castle. Here we go. The Highland region with these magnificent hills. Look at the big rushing river. How lovely. I can see some sheepies out there. Lots of old castles all throughout Scotland, and this is no exception. Look at these. All snowy up there. Looks like maybe it's like the end of winter here, and it's starting to melt down here, but not up there. Very, very beautiful landscape. Look at this old inscription there. It's a very beautiful place, the Scottish Highlands. I hope to see it someday. That's so example of the little lock here out in the wilderness there of the highlands. Oh, some bees. Very pretty. Let's take 
a look down at Montrose, the big city here. We zoom in, I can show you the Montrose Museum. We can look at some of the old history of the area. Big church spire there. Look at these, some old artifacts and little collections of things. This looks like a spoon, doesn't it? Here is one of those beautifully carved stones from the ancient times. A beautiful Celtic cross with all kinds of little intricate designs. You can see some animals and something happened in here. Some kind of person there, but some of the beautiful, beautiful stones of the ancient peoples of Scotland and Angus. Beautiful door. A big ship. Let's say fishermen's. Let's say fishermen's. Mussel society. How interesting. I guess they did mussel fishing. I love mussels. Some um, pistols, right? I don't know a lot about guns and weapons. Beautiful artwork. There's another cool ship model a fox and a cool bird but yeah I wanted to show you that stone but here you can really see when I'm talking about industry towns you can see all of the factories and industrial buildings there and all down this beautiful coastline you can see not just the little in industries but the little fishing areas and lots of beautiful cliffs let's find slideshow. Ooh, the caves. Let's see if there's any pictures of the caves. Some of the remarkable stone along the coast here. How pretty, right? I'm so used to I've been to southern England and I've seen all the chalk and the white cliffs of Dover, so it's like nothing like that. It's not chalky at all. Looks like maybe limestone, right? Very soft stone. Very cool. Let's see. I think I found a pretty spot further down here that I can show you. Look at all the little farms. How cute. Here it is. Or actually, I think it was this one. Arborth Cliffs. Down here. It was Abbey. I was right. I always doubt myself <laughs> if I don't write down a fact. See, this looks very sandstony to me, doesn't it? How interesting. Very soft. Don't write down a fact. I, I'll know it, but then I'll be like, was that really what it was? And then I'll doubt myself, but then I'm always right. I need to trust myself a little more sometimes. Dangerous cliffs. Be careful. You'll fall off into the ocean, the rocks below, the beautiful fields here. Don't you want to go running through that? Some little friends swimming around, little dolphins. Another little friend. Ooh, a big cave too. All that soft rock creating these tight pools and caves. And pretty wild flowers growing there. Look at that. Can't you hear this picture? All the crashing. How lovely, right? So here's Arbreth. So I'll show you Arbreth Abbey. Where Scotland was born. That's pretty much all that's left of the majority of it. But of course it's being preserved and protected. And look at this. I love these medieval arches. It's still very beautiful. Very haunting, isn't it? These old buildings. Much more modern part of the building there. Old stone walls. And a cemetery, too. I wonder how old that cemetery like to go read those tombstones. Well, here's one right here. That's right. I was trying to read this. It's all too faded. It's William something. And the inscription here, you can see Rex, which means king. So maybe this is the site of a Scottish king. I feel like there's been so many Williams. I just can't read the rest of it. It's so faded. But maybe someone can tell me who that is. Clearly, it's someone important. Wooden figure there of um, 
maybe Mary or some kind of womanly biblical figure. It kind of looks like a Mary figure, doesn't it? And there's a little model of it. Very nice. That's where Scotland was created. But let's head out to some other cool places to show you. We're going to look at this town called Kirimir. And there's something very special about the town of Kirimir. Um, actually, I'll show you here. It is the home of J.M. Barry, who wrote Peter Pan. So here we have Neverland. Look at this big pirate ship. So there's a great place here where kids can run around and play pirates and never grow up, right? That's where he's been laid to rest. There's Captain Hook to the mermaid there. And it looks like some kind of war memorial there. Yeah. <laughs> Cute. Where kids can still come and play and be young forever. There's Peter. How beautiful. Uh oh. Tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> Watch out, child. Gonna get gobbled up. Just like the clock. <laughs> and look at this, another old pretty graveyard as well. If we go down here, we can see Jay and Barry's birthplace. There's Peter again, looking over the house. And inside is a really cool little. J. and Barry Museum and Peter Pan Museum. Let's take a look. Uh oh. There's the crocodile again. Tick tock, tick tock. There's Peter. Another beautiful stained glass there of Peter Pan. Cool little seat there. An author may not always interfere with his story. There's Tick Tock's garden. Do you know Peter? Why swallows build the eaves of houses? It's to listen to the stories. Very cool, isn't it? Barry found it. Some of his clothes. Some, I assume, costumes from the play Peter Pan. But yeah, you can see how when, presumably when he lived here and when his family lived here, now this is not Peter Pan. This is actually the lead singer of ACDC. Uh, his name escapes me. Hold on, it'll show. Pon Scott, that's what it is. Pon Scott. Um, of course I saw this and I was like, is he not Australian? Is ACDC not Australian? But he was born in Angus and spent most of his childhood here in Kirimir. Whoa, big penguin. Dressed up like Cool is that? And look, there's a band probably singing ACDC songs. Um, so he spent most of his childhood here before moving to Australia. Isn't that neat? Another place I want to show you, but I was testing it out before and it doesn't pop up if you just go to look at it. It's over here. You zoom in, at least it wasn't when I was there, it wasn't popping up. So I have to type it in. And oh, it's gone from my search. There we go. It is Glamis Castle. A big, beautiful castle, and there's some interesting facts about this castle. Number one most interesting fact is that this is the castle where Shakespeare's Macbeth lived, not the real. Macbeth that the play is based on, but um, Shakespeare's version of Macbeth lived at this castle. Let's see if I can find, there we go, the three witches there. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. The other interesting fact that this was the home of, I want to say, I've always known her, the Queen Mother, but that was Queen Elizabeth's mother, Queen Elizabeth II's mother. Grew up here, her whole family 
lived in this castle. So, uh oh. <laughs> Sorry, my best. That's um, Charles the First, I believe it looks like. Um, oop. There's another guy there. Maybe it's Macbeth again. He's wearing a crown. Um, well, there's a picture of my bedroom here. How embarrassing. I'm so no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah. Very beautiful castle, isn't it? I don't think it's an official residence anymore. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's a little Highland cow being goofy. How <laughs> lovely. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, I don't... It is the home... Okay, so people do still live here. The Earl of Strathmore and Kinghorn is open to the public. Interesting, right? Lots of beautiful gardens around it too. The last place I want to show you also doesn't show up if I go to look it up on a Google Earth. And that is the Bell Rock Lighthouse, and I'll show you why it doesn't pop up. No, not the museum. Goodness. Not the museum. Goodness gracious. I had this all queued up for you guys. Bell Rock Lighthouse. Maybe if I go like this. Yep, there we go. So, it doesn't pop up on Google Earth. If I try to zoom in to show you this rock, it's microscopic on Google Earth. So let me go like this and show you why. Look how beautiful this lighthouse is. So the rock itself is down here. It's, um, I believe it's like not even visible for most of the time. There's lots of seals and lots of seagulls. Um, the waters, you know, can reach up to there. So this lighthouse was built, look at it in the distance, how long I think that is. was built because ships were crashing into this random rock. But look how pretty. So this lighthouse was built to prevent shipwrecks. And um, from what I read, there's only been one shipwreck since this lighthouse was built, and that's because it was during World War One, and the lighthouse was switched off to keep the U-boats from finding the shoreline. And a ship crashed into it, unfortunately. But it, I just thought it's the coolest lighthouse that I've, like, ever seen. Oh, look at <laughs> little seal out there saying hello. I think that's, like, the, oop, look, look at the seagulls getting eaten. Just like one of the loveliest, most beautifully haunting lighthouses that I've ever seen. Look at that. Like it's just floating in the water. That's so cool. Just with nothing for miles and miles around. Where's that other cool picture? Not of the seagulls being eaten. Look at that. Oh, it makes me like, it looks like, like there's some kind of ancient kingdom underwater and that's the only part that's visible. I like, I think it's very beautiful. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to show you for today. This beautiful, beautiful land. It's so pretty. I could explore Scotland all day. I found um, a couple of interesting things, but those were the highlights that I wanted to show you. So feel free to explore this area on your own, because there is so much to see. Look at all these little patchwork farms. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. This is an ongoing series on my channel. We're going to every little corner of the world. Next, we're going to be heading over to China, where we are going to see what's called the most beautiful mountain in China. So you don't want to miss it. They're not exaggerating. It is stunning. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. Let's look at the slideshow of Montrose as I end the video. And I hope that you have a very good